Thanks for dropping by. We made it to episode two. I'm so pleased about that. Thanks for the responses from episode one. I've got a few questions that I'll answer in future videos because I've been recording a little bit in advance. We're going to be looking at building macros and getting ready to build the macros. In the last video, when I was editing the video, I noticed something I had missed. So I'm going to correct that now before we start and show you what I mean. And that is the border. If I come into the actual border that we've got around our mask and then I come into the inspector, what I haven't done is change the border style. And I'm going to show you what I mean by removing the modifier from the position and length to show you this and then I'll put it back on in a minute. But if I reduce the length to zero, if you look in the viewer, we've still got a little bit of the border still showing. And what that is, is like an end cap on the end of the border. So if we look at border style over here on the right hand side, we've got the option to have rounded, square or flat. We have a vertical line that goes through those little icons. And that vertical line is the end of the border. So what we've got here is a round end cap on it. And we need to come to flat and select flat. So we don't have an end cap on it and now it disappears. So when we set the length and we animate the length and get to the end, we don't have that end cap. Before I dive into building the macro for use on the edit and the cut page or to be able to send it somebody, I've actually got some nodes in here that I could reuse over and over again. So now would be a good idea to save those nodes for reuse. Now they're still called macros and the reason for this is, is the term macro just is very similar to having a recipe. A macro will tell the application what to do and how to do it. You can have a macro which is just a group of nodes. You can have a macro that's saved so you can use it on the edit and cut page. And here I've got a great opportunity to take these four nodes which are the animation on the size and save them to use them over and over again in the future. The way to do that we just highlight them, select anyone, just hover over anyone and right click and you get the option to go to settings and save all as in the context menu. It's opened the macro folder. I've got inside the macros folder folders for different tools that I've got. So here I'm going to put this under animation and the name is going to be size switch. So that's going to tell me I've got a size switch tool available and I'm just going to save that out. What that means is if we come into the node graph now and we select shift and the space bar, we can actually type in the, well, we can type in size. And as soon as we start typing it, we can see it here. We can select it, add it, and you'll notice it'll bring those four nodes back in to Fusion. So we could reuse them again and again as we go forward. What you will notice is because I've already got them here, then they've got underscore one because of the way the name if you brought these in without these four, then you will have the original names. Every time you do a copy of something, it will have an underscore one. So if we did this again and we brought them in again, these have got two next to them. So any copy will have a number after it. And that is a great way of just saving a portion of a composition to use over and over again. One thing I always do is highlight all of them except the media out and then I select them and do settings, save as. Now ignore everything below that. We'll look at them in a future video, but save all as. I'm then going to navigate to a folder. I've already done this once, but I'm going to go to my desktop. I've got a comp backup folder and in here I'm going to save this and it's my ask cam. I've already done it once just to check this out. So I'd save it somewhere else. As again, more experience inside Fusion, I can use my older comps to create my newer comps. We're now at the point of the video where we're going to actually build the macro ready for the edit and the cut page. We need to think about this a little bit ahead because we need to select the nodes in the order we want to see those controls in the inspector. We can move controls anywhere we want inside the code, but just by setting this up originally in the correct order, will make things easy. If you build a small composition, then you may not want to change anything in the inspector. So this is really important to take note of. I'm going to start by selecting this media transform node first. This is going to have my input to take my media from the timeline and bring it into my composition. 
So I'm going to select this one first. The next thing I'm going to do is select the main mask, but I need to hold down the control on my keyboard and then I can select multiple nodes. By selecting my main mask, that puts all my main mask controls in the inspector, the sides. The next one I'm going to have is going to be the border because I want to change the width of the border and the color of the border. I'm then going to change this or add this mask here. And this is the transform that changes the shape of the mask. I don't need to select the in instance at this time because I don't need the instance controls inside the inspector. After that I'm thinking well I'll probably have the shadow for my mask and then after my shadow I am then going to go for my position and then I'm going to go for animation and my thinking about the animation next is I'm going to have the animation on a separate page in the inspector so I'm going to have the animation at the bottom. What I'm going to do at the top of the animation is have the switches to turn the animation on and off. I'm then going to, in fact, I'll do that separately. So we'll have switch one for switching off the intro. Then we'll have switch two to switch off the outro and the controls underneath. Next up, I need to select the rest of the control and I'm going to do it in a particular order. Coming along my pipe, but I'm going to leave this M1 until last. And the reason for that is because in Visual Studio Code, I use snippets based on M1, which you'll see in a future video. And by having it at the bottom of the code means I can just add labels on, I can add buttons on, presets on very quickly and very easily. So I'm going to select that one. I've now got all my nodes in the node tree selected, except the media in, except the media out. I can hover over any node, right click, and you come up to macro, create macro and this opens the macro editor just going to reposition the macro editor here and then i'm going to just show you in the macro what we've got here is a list of all the nodes in the order that we selected them if you just selected them randomly then this would be in a different order and this is the order the controls are going to appear in the inspector we're going to start with this media xf i'm going to open it up and you'll notice that we've got input already highlighted because we need to take an input from the timeline into this effect but this media xf moves what's inside the mask so i'm going to take the center so i can move it into the center i'm going to have the size and i'm going to have the angle i'm also going to make it so we can flip it horizontally and that way we've recorded on a smartphone it tends to be the opposite image so we can flip the image to make it look correct that's all the controls that i need from media xf my main mask i'm going to just click the little drop down so i can see all the controls now if you're not sure what controls to select what you can do is come into fusion graph here and double click and it deselects all the nodes and then if you double click on the node that you're working on the controls will appear in the inspector so this floating window does not affect what's underneath it you can still work underneath this. If you change any of the controls, it will not reflect in here because this is now open. We can change the controls in here though. We've got options just to tidy things up. If we notice we made a mistake, what I need from here is the sides. So that's going to change the shape for me. I don't need to change it from a solid because I've got another node for that. So the only thing I need from this one is the sides next up is the s border so i'm going to double click on the s border to bring the controls up i don't need sides that's connected as you can see by the green box i do need to change the border width so we'll select the border width border style well it's possible that we could have the border style but it is unlikely and then everything else is actually connected to the original node except we came into the style section and we de-instance we disconnected the color so we can change the color of the border so down here we've got style and we can select the red green blue and alpha so the end user can change the color of the border now we've got anim curves here and it just says anim curves three what we can do here so if i come into the border and i come to modifier and I hover over here, you can see we've got in the bottom left, it says Anim Curves 3, and this says Anim Curves 4. So what Anim Curves 3 is, is Anim Curves on the position. I'm going to come here, and at Source, I'm actually going to put the word Position in there. And the reason for doing that is so when I see it inside the inspector and when I see it inside the code, I know what it refers to. And in curves three doesn't really mean anything to me. I'm going to select all of these. I can delete them later. I can We can reopen the editor later if we want to, or I can hide them in the code. But I'm going to use all of them to start with. 
So that is my Anim Curves 3. Anim Curves 4, and again, if we hover over here, we've got Anim Curves 4 is our border length. Next is source, I'm going to type length. So I've got my mask XF, so if we double click on the mask, we can see we've got our controls in here. Now I'm using this to move the shape and change the shape and size, etc. I'm going to be using, in fact, what I'm going to do, I'm going to put all of them. I'm not going to use this one down here, but anything that I don't want, I can come back in, I can remove in the code. Now I'm thinking that the, the naming convention should be okay. So if I see these, I'm just going to put mask there and then I know that's controlling the mask. Below that we've got the shadow so I'll double click on the shadow to see the controls. You can go mad with the shadow but I'm just going to put the shadow offset, the softness, the colour. Somebody might want a different colour. The position of the light and the distance of the light. I think that's enough at this stage. We can add or remove controls at a later date. Position, this is my global position. So down here for double click position. I'm going to name this global position and then again in the inspector in the code i can see what it is i'm just going to have the size angle i think that'll do for the time being so that's the position next up we've got the switches for animation so if i just come here all i need is down here is that mix switch so remember we changed this to a switch that doesn't mean anything to me so i'm going to go uh, let's do anim intro on off and then we know that's a switch for the animation we come into the element intro what this is going to show me is the controls that are in the main node and i don't need to use the controls in the main node what i want to use is the controls in the modifier if we close this and it's just to hover over this in the bottom left hand corner we can see that it's anim curves one so these are the controls here anim curves one that we're going to use and this is going to be my intro it's on size so i'm going to put size in here and then i'm going to select everything this word in here is just so i know in the inspector what i'm looking at there are other things you can change as well because time scale is actually speed so what we could do is we could change time scale to anim speed and then in the inspector instead of it saying time scale here it will say anim speed and it gives the end user an indication of what it's for Next up is our SW2 switch, so if we come in here and rename this. I can guess it's Anim Curves, but if I come into here and come into here, over over here, it is Anim Curves 2, so here we go. So this is going to be, and I'm going to select all of them. You don't really use all of them, however, if they're there, you can use them and if you don't want them you can open this panel again and you can hide looking now at what's left all these are the spare ones that we don't use or we don't want controls in the inspector so that's my macro set up i just need to give it a name so i'm going to call this s cam and then in the top left we've got file now what's important is these different saves what we want to do is to save as a group if we save as a group it means we can open it up inside fusion we can add extra nodes we can change parameters and we can work with it in the future if we do save as it saves it as what's known as a macro or macro operator and it will be one node that is sealed there are ways of opening it but it just might as well just save it as a group save saves over the top of an existing macro which means once we've saved this out as a group if we then come back into here and change anything we can just click save but i as a habit just use save as group because then i'm in control and i know that i'm not overwriting the wrong thing so we're going to click save as group it's then going to open it in the macro because it does not know if it want if you want to use it in the edit or cut page we could use this in the macro section which means it's a tool inside fusion you could save it in here what we can do is we need to navigate to our effects folder now i use quick access pop-up so i can just come in here press middle mouse button and i can come and i can select my folders really quickly so i'm going into the effects folder of davinci resolve so it's davinci resolve support fusion templates edit effect and here we are and i've got a folder here called pip for picture in picture open this and then here's a previous one i was working on but this is the one we're working on now so i'm going to save this out and it's going to want to save over the top which is yes that's fine we've now saved the macro and it is inside the effects library in the edit and the cut page 
things like the effect library in Fusion as well. Depending on the speed of your computer, if you rush to close this, it can crash your computer because what it's actually doing is writing that file to that folder. And depending on the speed of your computer, how much memory have you got, how big your comp is, it takes a little bit of time. So don't rush and press close because if you do it really quickly, so you save group and press close straight away, it will crash because it's writing that information to that folder. We've still got our original comps on here, which is great. And if we come and we save project and now that's saved and if I come down here into my project library there it is so I can always open this again and just see these notes and we will be using a different method to save different versions of different nodes in future videos so now all I do is head back to the edit page this is our fusion clip so this is actually what we made so I'm going to bring in some footage so I'll bring, well, I'll bring in this chap so it's a different picture. And then if we come to our effects library, effects, picture in picture, we've got here SCAM. And if we drag this down here, we've now got our SCAM. Looking at that, I left the animation on. Oops, not going to change it now. I'll change it later. With the clip highlighted, if we come into the inspector and select effect, what you can see now is all the controls here in the inspector for you to use. So we have all the controls in the order that we selected them in the inspector. They are very messy. And what we're going to do in the next episode is we're going to dive into code. We are going to tidy this up. So I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Enjoy your week. And I'll catch up with you next Sunday.